So the topic of this chapter is ethical reasoning and the question of what is ethics in, in general. Now, some people say, well, what is ethics and why should you study it? Well, of course, we can say just off the top of our head, like, well, it has to do with right and wrong and good and evil and what you should do and what you shouldn't do, which is a pretty standard answer. Um, but you may say, well, why should I study this? I already know that you shouldn't murder people and that lying is wrong. And we already know this. We've been taught this since we were children. So why should we even study this since we already know it? Well, there are deeper reasons, and these are philosophical reasons and practical reasons for why studying ethics is a good thing and why having a deeper understanding of ethics and ethical reasoning will serve us well through the rest of our lives, no matter what career we decide to go into and what kind of life we choose to lead as we go through life. We're still going to have to make ethical decisions. We're going to have to argue with other people about the ethical decisions they're thinking about. We may have to convince people about what's right and wrong in various settings. And sometimes we'll be faced with an ethical issue that's difficult and we're not sure what we think about it. And the deeper we understand ethics and, and ethical views, the better able we will be to make a rational, uh, reasonable decision uh, about what we should do or what kind of policy we should have. So one reason to study ethics is that people often disagree about important ethical issues. So rather than just having people yelling at one another or getting into a fist fight or, or worse, we would have people present their views in a rational way. So here are the reasons why uh, I think that this is what we should do. And the other person can present their view. So, well, this is my reasons why I think this is the best policy. And then you can analyze those using your critical thinking skill to say, well, uh, is this based on reasonable assumptions about what's right and wrong and what's valuable uh, or is it not? And then we could maybe come to an agreement and at the least maybe we could understand why we're disagree disagreeing about something. And secondly, uh, a critical examination of ethical ideas and issues can lead to clearer understanding, as the quote says, and possibly help to resolve conflicts related to the former point there, which is just an elaboration of what I just said. And finally, this isn't discussed as much in the text, but the idea that, well, if you study ethics, just like studying philosophy in general, you'll come to a deeper understanding of yourself, what you believe and what's valuable to you. As we proceed through the course, there'll be a lot of issues you may not have thought about and questions you haven't considered. But once you do, maybe you say, well, yeah, I thought I might think this, but once I've thought deeply about it, I think this. So uh, I know myself a little bit better and have a deeper understanding of myself. So, as I said, ethics has to do with what's right and wrong. And one way to think about ethics is just as whatever the rules or principles are that guide your society. So you could say, well, the rules of the United States or Western Europe or the rules of ancient China. And those are the ethics or ethos of those cultures. But the way we're thinking about it in this course is more of a philosophical way. We're not just looking at, well, here are the rules or here are the principles, here are the values of a particular culture or individual. But a deeper uh, question is what type of reasoning is involved in, in this way of thinking about ethics? What are the values and why are those the values? So in, in the definition here of ethics as a discipline of philosophy, as an area of philosophy that's worthy of study, as an examination of ethical views and types of reasoning from a critical or evaluative standpoint. So we can look at rules of a culture and say, are these the right ones? And why are they the right ones or why are they not the right ones? And we could look at certain values and say, well, are these the values that one should have or shouldn't? And what are the reasons why someone should or shouldn't have this set of values? So as the text points out, there's two types of evaluation. And this is a nice little chart. Uh, I think it's called a chart on page five. We have normative judgments in ethics, law, aesthetics, religion, and custom. And then descriptive judgments in, say, sociology and psychology is not the only areas where you'd have descriptive judgments. But normative judgments tell us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. So in ethics, we would say, oh, that murder is wrong. That would be a normative judgment. It's a norm. It tells us what we should do. In law, we'd say, well, murder is illegal, and that's a reason for why you shouldn't do it. In aesthetics, we'd say something, well, that's a beautiful painting. Uh, religion also has normative judgments in it. And there's normative judgments of custom. We think, well, these are sometimes related in some way. 
Law and ethics, religion and custom are certainly related in certain ways. Aesthetics, maybe not so much, although sometimes we use aesthetic terms in talking about moral behavior. We say something's disgusting or someone's sick for having done a certain thing. And those are more aesthetic judgments than they are uh, value, uh, ethical value judgments. And descriptive judgments are in sociology, psychology. We're talking about the, what people as a whole do in a group. In sociology, psychology, we're talking about individual behavior. We can also think of physics as full of descriptive claims. We'd say that you know, um, that energy equals um, uh, mass times the speed of light squared, and that's a descriptive judgment about uh, the relations between mass and energy. Uh, and But we don't say, well, it should be that way, or if it's wrong, if it doesn't turn out that way, that, well, that's just the way it is. Whereas normative judgments say, well, that's the way things should be, or that's the right way or the wrong way for things to be. Throughout this course, we'll talk about arguments. Well, you'll be asked to present arguments when you uh, write your papers and your discussion questions. Often you're, you're asked to defend a view, saying, well, do you think this is right or wrong? Why or why not? That's asking you to give reasons. It's asking you to give an argument. This is the same way the term is used in a court of law when the prosecution gives their argument to try to uh, convince a jury that, that's, or a judge that someone is guilty of a crime. Uh, that's the argument. It's the same in philosophy. I would say, well, here are the reasons why I think that this is wrong, and you lay them out. Uh, the reasons that we give are called the premises of the argument, and what we're trying to prove is called the conclusion. So we give reasons uh, for why we believe a certain thing, and these can be at a higher or lower level when we're talking about arguments. Maybe that'll be more clear uh, as you do the reading and as we uh, I talk about uh, ethical theory. Now, don't let this terms scare you. You hear theory, you, you get theory in, in your humanities classes, you know, when you maybe in, in a literature class, you hear uh, theories of interpretation of literature. And then in sociology and psychology, certainly you're going to hear theory, the word theory thrown out a lot. Uh, but in ethics, it it's, uh, has a particular meaning. It's not the same as a scientific theory that we're going to go out and test to try to see whether it's uh, true or not. Um, but it's a systematic exposition of a particular view about the nature and basis of good or right. And that's a, a mouthful, and you'll see that in the text. Uh, but we'll look at theories, and they're basically views that'll say, well, here's what's really valuable, and so therefore here are the rules or principles that we should follow to make sure that we protect and promote this value, whatever it is. And that's very general, but as we go through each of the theories, we'll see, oh, yes, well, this theory thinks that... Uh, you know, promoting the happiness of people is the most important thing. Well, this view thinks that honor and respect are the most important things, etc. Those are just examples of, of some of the things we'll be talking about. And so that's what we mean by an ethical theory. And so, again, we'll look at ones that say one thing, some say the other thing. Uh, a lot of us have an ethical theory. We don't even know it. Uh, we may just think we have just a mixed up set of rules that we follow, like don't murder and don't steal, but we don't think about what connects all these things together. Is there a higher level principle or view that says, well, this is why murder is wrong. This is why stealing is wrong. And then maybe even a higher level view above that principle that says, well, the reason this is the, the principle to follow is because here's what's most valuable. Here's the most valuable thing. Here's the most rational thing. It's another way to think of it. And so, therefore, the principles follow from that, and then our judgments about what's right and wrong follow from the principles. And so, in the text on page 11, um, it does it in a different way, but it's the, the same idea, is that, well, you could start with ethical theory, and from that, you could deduce ethical principles, and that could, you use those in arguments to make ethical judgments. And so, you have a theory that implies that murder is wrong, and then you can make a judgment if somebody committed a particular kind of act and say, well, that was murder. Well, since we have the principle murder is wrong, then it will follow that the person did something that was wrong. Right? That's just me giving an argument there. Uh, but it also can go back the other way. We could start from ethical judgments. We could say, well, that person did something wrong, uh, just looking at a particular act. Well, that he killed an innocent person. And so, well, uh, we think that's wrong. So what principle uh, would govern that act? We say, well, it's the principle that you shouldn't murder people. And so, well, okay, now, we've got that principle, so is there a higher level theory that would tell us, well, why is murder wrong? We could ask that question because maybe we don't always ask, well, why is murder wrong? Well, they may say, well, the ethical theory is divine command theory, which we'll look at in the next lesson. Well, it says that 
divine commands it says that we should do what God commands and while in the Bible it says you shouldn't murder so since that's our theory that we're working with here for this example well God says murder is wrong therefore it's wrong okay and so that's the theory the other theory that we'll look at later says that well we should promote the common good uh, with our actions and murder doesn't promote the common good clearly because it takes people's lives and they can't be happy if they're not alive and that makes a lot of people unhappy if you're killing innocent people so therefore we could say from this ethical theory that we should promote the common good, we could deduce the principle that you shouldn't uh, kill, right? And then from that, we could make judgments. And again, this can go back and forth uh, in terms of coming up with our own theory. Now, you may not like any of these theories that we look at throughout the course. Uh, you may like all of them for different reasons a little bit. You may find some interesting and some not. You may immediately latch onto one and say, yeah, that's mine. Uh, but each one of them can shed some light on what we're thinking about when we think about what's right and wrong and what's good and evil. Okay, so that's the end of our uh, lesson here on uh, ethics and ethical reasoning. And we'll proceed on through the fog.